That there is me and my girlfriend Mia. And currently, we're in the middle of Mexico. To help us get here, we've been gifted a decked out van equipped with custom woodwork, fully equipped kitchen, convertible bed, storage box to store gear externally, solar panels and outlets for charging, plus a long list of other features and capabilities. Together, along with some friends, we're on an epic two week road trip adventure. The goal of the trip is to chase wind and waves down the coast of Baja. And the most exciting part about the trip for me is that Mia and I have both never experienced van life, and thanks to Sandy Vans, we've been hooked up with a cream of the crop vehicle to experience Baja in the best way possible. This is our journey south of the border. But to catch you up to speed as to how we've gotten here, we need to rewind. Our story begins January 9th, 6 a.m. back in my hometown of Oregon, where Mia attempted to make her own oat milk because we were out of milk and needed some coffee. It did not work too well, so we scratched the coffee, met up with my friend Forrest, and jumped in his parents' car who graciously drove us to the airport where we planned to catch a flight from Portland to San Diego. But there was one problem. Forrest booked the wrong flight. Okay, what's going down right now? Forrest bought the wrong ticket. He leaves two hours later than me. We're flying to San Diego right now before the next adventure. I'm not gonna tell you guys where we're off to yet, but you probably know because of the title and thumbnail. Forrest, uh, <laughs> Forrest has got to uh, figure out how to get on our flight, hopefully, or else he's arriving three hours later than us. I know, this is brutal. I don't even know what to say. After an easy sweet talk, Forrest was put right on our flight. We breezed through security and we boarded our plane. And then, boom. The problems weren't over yet. Update, we just had to deplane our plane due to maintenance issues. We're trying to figure out how to get to San Diego and it's an absolute shit show. So yeah, our flight got canceled due to maintenance issues. We deboarded the plane. I dealt with United for hours on the phone and then we got a new flight into San Diego with 4 p.m. Kill. We killed time in the airport, reboarded the plane and next thing we knew, we finally made it to stop one. San Diego. San Diego marked the beginning of our road trip adventure. It acted as the hub of the trip. It's where me and Mia were gifted our trusty steed and where we were to meet everyone who was joining the caravan. Joining Mia and I in the van were my friends Forrest and Max. And tailing behind in an old beater truck were my mates Will, Charlie, and Caden. Not to mention the entire Sandy Vans crew was caravanning with us all as well. With no time to waste, we packed up our bags, loaded them into the rig, and the adventure was officially underway. Alright, me and I. It's double walls. Look at it on the left. This is not. Look at the left and then look to the right. First destination was a rad little spot on the beach with what looked to have a pretty epic point set up. And the first day here was the day before the big swell hit. Many of you know that I'm a fairly new surfer, but over the last few years I've completely let it consume my life and I was stoked to see that the forecast for our trip was looking really promising. And the shape of the little waves that were coming through this spot got us all super excited to see what it would look like when it got big. Regardless, everyone was antsy to get in the water after our long drive, so we still had fun messing about. After the session, we were gifted with an insane sunset, and it was the perfect kickoff to our Baja adventure. Honestly though, all I could think about was the waves that were supposed to arrive by morning. So before I let my excitement get too out of control, I passed out and awaited what tomorrow had to offer. And unfortunately, it didn't end up offering quite what I had hoped for at all. Although there were certainly waves, it was kind of just big and mushy and not quite working like we had all hoped. 
Although I did get out there and catch some really fun and long rides, it was nothing too out of this world. Without sticking around for too long, we got on the road and headed further south to see if we could find anything else. First glimpse of the ocean in a while, and waves are firing, dude! Driving into our next spot, we spotted some waves from the road that looked psycho. I rushed to get in the water yet again to try and score, and although there was much more size, it ended up just being a pretty tough surf. It was sectiony waves that were closing out all too often, and the paddle out was a freaking nightmare. But there was a pretty fun backwash. Surfing is funny in that way. I feel like I constantly build up these fantasies of perfect waves that I'm about to score, and then 99% of the time, I'm pretty let down. But that's also what makes the sport so appealing to me. It's the amount of effort it takes to get good waves that makes the ride that much more special. That one was sick. After being denied three days in a row, we were pretty ready to switch things up and go chase waves. We heard about this spot called Punta San Carlos, and the forecast was lining up to be pretty fun conditions. With a long journey ahead of us, we began our adventure into the unknown. on dried up lake beds and dirt roads. We passed through cactus forests and had no human contact for miles. Eventually we arrived and this place looked out of another world. It had these huge mountains that made you feel like you were in Iceland or something. The zone offered this fun little wave and now it was just time to wait for the wind to kick. After that session, we were all pretty frothed to have finally scored a good day on the line. And with plenty more surf in the forecast, I was confident that the waves of our dreams lie just around the corner. Yeah!